In this episode, we build this strange cylinder that's being mounted in the floor of a house. You wanna see how we did it? Yeah. <laughs> cool. Let's go. <laughs> That looks great. <laughs> no, the cut looks awesome. Cool. But you made a you made a rectangle. I made two D rectangles. Damn. Cut. One of those rectangles have the circle in it. No way. Wait, one circle, what? two circles. No, that's crazy. And if you roll it the way it's supposed to be rolled in theory, those circles will be 90 degrees from each other in the cylinder. Damn. That's crazy. It is weird seeing how close those circles are. Yeah. Like I did it by well, arc length and all this, that. This, like, when you look at an unrolled cylinder, yeah. it looks like there's so much more material than necessary. 100%. Like, circumference is a very deceiving measurement. Yeah. Yeah, so, I hope it works. <laughs> the good news is, it's out of your hands now. Yay! I'm putting it in your hands. Oh, thanks. <laughs> I got it. Here we go. All right, it's up to you, roller. <laughs> it's your fault. Wait, what could possibly go wrong? In this episode, I roll a cylinder with our new tool. How about that? What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> Thank you. 
cylinder. That was worth the four grand right there. Look at that. Sorry YouTube, I forgot to film the stitch welding, but that's what I'm starting with. So probably gonna put a little bit of weld on the inside and then grind it smooth on the outside. Well, it'll have to be ground smooth everywhere. And then we'll, uh, we'll shoot it back through the roller and try to flatten this part out, or roll the opposite of flatten this part out. Okay, now I've got to put this welded cylinder back on the roller. That's why this uh, cylinder comes out. So you can pivot it out, put your completed circle back on here, close it, and then roll it until it's perfectly round. So let's, let's try that theory out.
Cylinders are hard. I know I time-lapsed most of this, but it was a toughie and uh, I needed to focus and I didn't think about the camera a whole lot. But I'm hoping this serves the purpose. It'll be powder coated, nice and pretty. Tried to do my best to clean up all the seams. The sandblasting and powder coating will take care of the rest of it. Shout out to Lucas over at Powder Coating Creations. He's gonna take care of this thing now, but kind of a rush job. So he's coming by today, turn this thing around and we're hoping the turnaround time is a week or two. You know, they paid extra for Expedite. So I had to put some things on the back burner and take care of this thing. But here you go. Learned a lot about rolling cylinders, actually. There's a cool trick. There's several YouTube videos I watched that I learned this from, shocking. But when you want to do a ring, you know what, I might film a short about this. So, I am going to regurgitate something I learned on YouTube, which is a trick when using pinch roller. So, if anyone's ever tried to roll a smooth, round cylinder with a roller of any kind, a bar roller or a pinch roller or a slip roller, you know that the last little bit of the material ends up kind of flat, and then the middle part is what's actually rolled. Well, how do you get rid of those flat ends or that waste material we're sort of used to? There's a cat in here, by the way. Um, <clears throat> so here's what you do. And uh, by the way, we'll link to the YouTube videos I watched yesterday. So what you do is you set your pinch. So these pinch rollers work by actually physically pinching the material, right? These two, this is the, this is the bend roller, these are the pinch rollers, or whatever they're technically called, yeah. but that's what they do. Once you have it set, take your material out. And then, you know, this is the side that you normally feed it through. You actually want to come feed it through the other side. You set your bend roller up a little bit. You can figure out which way your rolls are going. So you want to feed it in this side just a little bit. Ah. And then so look, it is a smooth bend on that side. So you do it to both sides. And now, when you go to roll this thing into a cylinder, I might actually do it. See that? Kind of looks like a half pipe. See how there's like zero flat? It's yeah. like smooth all the way. So now when you feed it through this side, I'm doing it fast and loose just so I can show you guys, but. Now you crank this up and you roll. But you'll see as we get closer to a full ring, the ends are actually already smooth. There are people way better than me at this out there. And of course I've got a little spiral going, but I'm gonna crank this all the way up. There. I'm gonna get a little more. One, two. Oh, it's perfect. Ha! Look at that. Yeah, no flat bits. Zero flats. I did not cut anything. Nice. How cool is that? Nice little trick, dude. Thanks. I have a, I have a question. Yeah. So, how do you. So, yours is pretty close here. What do you, how do you fix it from like, if it's off a little bit like that? Bend it. Just. I mean, if it's quarter inch material, it's gonna be hard. But with all this eighth inch stuff, it was like that. You just kind of wrestle it smooth. And then once you, let's say your weld was a little weird, mm -hmm. tack it together, stitch weld it, grind it smooth, put it back in the roller, roll it some more, and then it can't go anywhere. So it's just gonna sit there and roll and you're kind of pre-stressed the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Granted, the weld line is a little harder than the rest of it, but nothing's perfect. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> nice little trick. Oh, hey. This one was a challenge. My first 
sort of large scale cylinder rolling experience with the new slip roller or pinch roller. I learned a lot. There's that part in the middle of maybe this video where I learned that you need to pre-roll the very ends so that when they come together, they're flat. And this was a tolerance heavy build. Like there were some crucial tolerances we needed to get, some funky clamping techniques I had to use. I ruined the cord of my MIG welder in the process of this project, so that was fun. But very pleased with how it came out. I don't exactly know what it's being used for. I mean, the, the general idea is that this is gonna be mounted in the floor of a house, and this will be essentially a skylight, but in the floor. And in here will be showcased like the old well on the property, as I understand it. So this will be set in the floor, create this like environment, sort of display cylinder for the old well. These holes are actually for ventilation fans so that condensation doesn't build up underneath the thick glass or acrylic, whatever they're using for the window. But that glass will sit in here. This will be flush with the floor. And they needed it right now. Yeah. So we, we cranked through it as fast as we could. Shout out to Lucas at Powder Coat and Creations for knocking this out for us and like, two days, which yeah. is insane. So from start to finish, this build took like 36 hours. Yeah. <sighs> so Nuts. I'm quite pleased. I think I hit my numbers. You know, there was no discussion on where the welds should live. So I just sort of took, took some liberties on that. You know, the MIG welds for the main ring are inside here. And then the TIG welds for the side ring are under here, but pretty well hidden. So yeah, very well hidden. I'm hoping they're happy with it. They saw the photos and they are pleased and they're coming to get it today. So there they are. <laughs> <laughs> you, can't, well, you can't script that. All right, well, great. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe, please. We love you. Buy our merch. You can, in fact, buy this shirt and other things. Yeah. Thanks for the support. All right. See you soon.